Earlier today in New Hampshire, Governor Ron DeSantis made his third major policy speech, this one on the economy. Here's a little bit of it. And we cannot allow no longer the failed ruling class in this nation to dictate our nation's policies. We have to defeat those individuals and institutions that have caused our economic malaise. We cannot have policy that kowtows to the largest corporations in Wall Street at the expense of small businesses and average Americans. There's a difference between a free market economy, which we want, and corporatism. Joining us right now, Policy Director for the DeSantis campaign, Dustin Carmack. Thanks for joining us, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Can you explain to us what Governor DeSantis means when he says corporatism? What is corporatism? Well, I think in today's day and age, you've seen essentially how over the course of time, corporations have done uh, have done business in a way that would be a net benefit to their gains overall from a regulatory capture standpoint through taxation. If you look at the way that five of the seven wealthiest counties in this country revolve around Washington, D.C., it shows you that that is where the power resides to make it in this country versus Main Street America. Forgive the provocative nature of this question, but I think it's something that Republicans uh, continue to sort of wrestle with. Uh, it, take us back to 2012. You remember when Mitt Romney was just pummeled by Barack Obama because Mitt Romney was standing up for corporations. He said, listen, corporations are people, which legally they are actually in the, in the eyes of federal law. So when you look at uh, Governor DeSantis's policy that he put forth now railing against corporatism, uh, who would have been better aligned back in 2012 with this policy, Barack Obama or Mitt Romney? Nah, you know, that's a good question. I mean, I look at it look at going forward now. I mean, when we're talking about what Wall Street is caring more about, the bottom line and, and investing uh, American taxpayer dollars with the People's Liberation Army in China, then what is happening investing in America, then we have a huge problem and there's a disconnect. And I think that's where Governor DeSantis is trying to make that point. When the system is being built around uh, in apparatuses to protect themselves from innovation, for, protect them from the free market principles that we actually really do care about, then the, we are not doing what is, is needed for this economy. And you want this to be a, an economy that is about the nation, not the other way around. And so the nation is what we want to drive towards in terms of families being able to survive in this country. And so that's where all this entire economic approach is driven from. The question of uh, China was definitely a major thrust of the governor's remarks today. Let's take a look at another clip here from New Hampshire. So here's what we have to do to get this right. First, we have to restore the economic sovereignty of this country and take back control of our economy from China. This abusive, the abusive relationship, the asymmetric relationship between our two countries must come to an end. No more massive trade deficits, no more importing of goods uh, with stolen intellectual property, no more preferential trade status. We need to incentivize the repatriation of American capital and investment here in the United States so we can recapture our supply chains and build a strong, durable industrial base. And in Florida, uh, we've actually taken action against the CCP. We have banned the purchase of land in Florida by members of the Chinese Communist Party or its affiliates. Now, as you know, I'm sure uh, President Trump has said on the campaign trail at various times that he hopes by the end of four years, should he be reelected, that we will no longer be manufacturing in China. He's walked that back a little bit, but that seems to be the direction of the party right now, including what Governor DeSantis wants to achieve. Well, I think when you look at the supply chain crisis that we saw break out during COVID, essentially that was just essentially the tip of the iceberg of where we've seen the Chinese going for a long time. And, and for a long time, American business have been told through you know their accession into the World Trade Organization and elsewhere that they were going to become you know flourishment of, of democracy and the economic you know uh, the economic nature of their economy would help them culturally. Uh, but instead, they are using it to essentially build uh, a mammoth army 
uh, with intention, not just in the South Pacific, uh, in the, in the Indo-Pacific, but, you know, elsewhere around the globe. And so when we're talking about trying to control some of these supply chains, it's, you know, controlling our own destiny. We don't want to be uh, demurring essentially the option for the Chinese to be able to use that as a leverage point against the United States economically for the things that we need in this country. And so when we're looking at how to do that, it is a complicated facet, but we want to drive this capital back in the United States to be able to help people here. Yeah. It sounded like Governor DeSantis views China right now as a global adversary for this country, and I think that there's a good case for the, to be made there. So given that, should American corporations be allowed to engage in business in China, considering they are an adversary? Well, I think they've been told, you know, that essentially they're playing by the rules that have been given them right now. Uh, what I think you have to do is have a, a really honest talk. And I think what the governor is saying is, you know, there's going to be a new sheriff in town and we're going to you're essentially going to have to make a decision. I think this administration, the Biden administration right now, has been focused on trying to find this way where we can get into this, you know, quote unquote, healthy competition with them. Yeah. But that is not their intent. And you cannot be that that is a fallacy. And so when the governor is talking about this, it's about building hard strength, building a hard economy that is prepared to win this. Uh, we win, they lose is the message. And that is where we are going to drive this. Governor DeSantis also spoke uh, very clearly about the immigration crisis and how he would crack down and also talked about his record in Florida in that regard. And I think it's pretty strong. I guess the question for voters now is what is the, and maybe you can help us, Mr. Carmack, on this. What is the key distinction between Governor DeSantis's economic policy as it points to corporatism, immigration and China and President Trump's position on those same issues? Or is it really just a question of the ability and effectiveness to carry out those policies? I think it's a mix of both. I mean, I think the, the, the getting it done is a real thing. I mean, there's a lot of politicians that will sell you a bag of goods uh, and won't lift a finger when it comes to getting it done or have the, the foresight and execution of a strategy to do that. And I think where Governor DeSantis has distinguished himself in every facet of the policymaking body, you know, his time as governor, is he's effective in terms of seeing that chessboard, you know, 12 pieces down the line. And I think he's going to do that same with the, with the economy questions, the Chinese questions. And when it comes to picking the personnel and executing policy, it is difficult in Washington when everybody's up against you and he is the guy to take it on. Was that part of the problem with the Trump administration in terms of uh, not being able to carry out his agenda? Because it is very similar to the policy points we heard today. I think when you look at specifically the China question in terms of where it was, you know, you'd make the case, uh, there was good inroads and in the, in the, the, the governor has said, you know, the, the, the President Trump, you know, changed the conversation, uh, at least uh, towards China, you know, in his administration. But when it comes to execution, when the, the Treasury Department and others did not, in my opinion, put you know, solid pressure on Wall Street in terms of what was going to affect in the longer term, the bottom line of Americans. Um, that is something that I think has to be done. I think that there was a drive to think that, that, that we could find a way to get into a, a stable landscape with the Chinese via negotiations. And I think that, you know, diplomat diplomacy is going to be an important part of Governor Santos' strategy, but you have to have all these other facets working in line with each other to make sure that you have the high ground on those negotiating positions and also be prepared for conflict, which could be very, very dangerous and very soon possibly in our time life. Uh, Governor DeSantis also uh, made a point to point out the, the DEI agenda that you see from many corporations. He's uh, gone after Disney on that regard in his state. Uh, how does that square with a company's uh, freedom of speech or freedom to hire the employees that align with their values? Yeah, I think when, when, when look what just happened with the Supreme Court, I mean, in terms of what universities were doing. And so when we're talking about, you know, we don't want discrimination at all. And so I think the Supreme Court is saying when you are devising strategies and things that, that don't actually apply equal, um, you know, apply discrimination actually as a facet of employment uh, in many ways, that is that is not OK. And it, it actually works against the economics of, of the free market and the society that we want to live in. And so when same with the, you know, the ESG standards, uh, this is driving through ideology, not the market. And so it does have an effect on Americans bottom lines. And I think that's what Governor DeSantis is trying to point out. Uh, less than 30 seconds here. But the governor did point to ESG standards. He did take them on in Florida. Many states have. Is there a federal role here or should it be left up to the states? 
No, I think there is. I mean, when you're looking at the SEC and how you're going to be looking at these companies, are they doing what is in their fiduciary interest to protect both uh, their investors and from a business standpoint, like you, you want them to be operating effectively. And so, you know, it does make a difference when you're talking about people's pensions, when you're talking about investments in this country, then those things for, that are done in an ideological manner need to be uh, handled through not these ideological lenses. Dustin Carmack is the policy director for the DeSantis campaign, and I do like it when voters start focusing on policy, so it was a good day in that regard. Thank you, Dustin. There's more to come on O'Connor tonight. Mm -hmm.